Hey there, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take you through replacing the radiator on a Mack truck. The process is relatively the same for just about every make and model. We're going to take you through the process here. First, we're removing the air bleed hose. Then the radiator hose. Then we're going to remove the air to air boots and pipes. Then we're going to cover the porch with some plastic bags and zip ties just to make sure no dirt or debris falls in. We're going to remove the AC condenser without removing any of the lines so that we don't have to worry about draining or recharging the AC system after we're done. We're going to remove the air dryer from the radiator frame. Then we're just going to set the AC condenser off to the side, trying to be careful not to damage it or any of the lines. We're going to remove all the bolts that hold the charge air cooler on and remove the charge air cooler. We also remove the radiator fan and now we've got the hood propped up and we're removing the springs and cables that retain the hood. Now we're removing the mounting bolts that hold the radiator frame to the truck. going to wrestle the radiator out. This is a lot easier if you have two people, but it is doable by yourself. Now we're going to remove the radiator shroud. Just four bolts in each corner. And then we need to remove the radiator frame from the radiator because it's going to be reused on the new radiator. Remove the new radiator from the box and install it in the old radiator frame. So we got the new radiator mounted in the original frame. Now the new radiator is an aftermarket unit from Northern Radiator. Now I was pretty hesitant to go with an aftermarket radiator. I've had problems in the past with aftermarket radiators, basically uh, they don't last. And then uh, if they fail within the warranty period, basically they don't cover them. What they do is they make you send it back to them before they agree to warranty anything, which means that unless you want to have your truck down for two weeks, you have to buy another one. Now after you've bought another one, put it in, gotten on the road, shipped it to them, you never hear from them again they basically just blow you off and you don't see anything back ever. So I wanted to put a Mac radiator in it 
from the Mac dealership. I didn't care what it cost. They quoted me $1,700 for a Mac radiator, and I would have paid it. The problem was, is they didn't have one in stock anywhere in the country. It would have had to ship directly from the manufacturer, and they basically told me, I can order it for you. I have no idea when you're going to get it. So I ended up ordering an aftermarket radiator. A few differences on this, and I'll go over them here for you quick. One, this is supposed to be a heavier duty radiator. It's got metal end caps. It's a three row radiator. The factory radiator was a two row, although that's a bit deceptive. I'll cover that here in a second. The mounting's a little bit different. It uses factory frame, but it's got two metal rings here with the rubber bushing and it's got pins that you push through it. Factory radiator with plastic end tanks has these coarse plastic bolts while the knees screw in here attach it to the frame. Now that's all well and good. Technically this probably is a lot better for vibration resistance. However, it didn't line up very good. It was kind of a pain to get it together, uh, but it all went together. It fits. Remember I mentioned that the three row versus two row was a little bit deceptive. The factory radiator was a two row radiator. The core on this one is actually about a sixteenth of an inch thinner. Basically the factory radiator used two wider rows, whereas this radiator uses three narrower rows. The core on this radiator is just a tiny bit thinner. I wasn't too happy about that, but this truck's never had overheating issues. The reason why we're replacing the radiator is because the bottom part of this radiator basically rotted out to the point that it's no longer repairable. End caps are leaking a little bit. And as far as I know, it's a factory 17-year-old radiator. Now we're just installing the new radiator. Air to air. Reinstalling the AC condenser and dryer. Reinstall the hood cables and springs. And fan crowd. Reinstall the fan. Reinstall the air to air boots. Since it costs a lot to win, 
Now to me, whenever you're doing this kind of stuff and you have hoses off, that's the time to replace them. If the old ones are still good, just go ahead and throw them in your side box so you have them if you need them if you blow a hose out down the road. Now this radiator hose, you can buy this stuff from Napa or your other auto parts stores as well. It's just straight two inch radiator hose. It might be a different size depending on your application. This truck's two inch. Now, it comes in like, I think it's uh, three foot lengths. You can buy however much of it you need. I mean, you can tell them you need four inches of it and that's what they're sell you. However, I really suggest just buying a whole three foot length of it. Stuff's good to have around. Radiator, this radiator hose comes in handy for a lot of different things. Use a lot of my old hoses for uh, where hoses are chafing together or lines or different things like that. Works really good for that. It's really good to have have some of this around. Have some carry some of it in your truck. Plus, if you cut a piece too short. You still have enough. Maybe that might be okay. Just tighten your hose clamp up where it's snug, but you can still move it around and then slide it up towards that nipple. It'll kind of stop when it gets there. Then back it up, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and go ahead and tighten it down. Okay, so we got everything's back together here now. Filled it all up with 50-50 uh, mix, a regular old green antifreeze, and uh, distilled water. We've run it through a couple temperature cycles here, checked everything for leaks. We don't have any. So the next thing we're going to do, put some pre-charge in it. Well, it should work its way through, through the system now. Basically the point of that is it keeps your antifreeze from getting acidic, which will eat your liners. Uh, it can be kind of a problem on the diesel engines, especially if you're running the standard green antifreeze. I run this green antifreeze because it's available everywhere. Basically every single mom-pop gas station you go has green antifreeze. Then you don't have to worry about contaminating your entire system. If you have to pick up a gallon antifreeze on the road and the only antifreeze available is not compatible with what you have in your truck. Now I have some coolant test strips around here somewhere and I was going to show you guys that process but I can't find them right at the moment here so we're just going to put a pint in for right now and when I come across them I'll uh, check the antifreeze and I'll adjust it to make sure we're good to go. Anyway guys thanks for watching. Hope you like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a good day.